What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Make Money and Have Fun show. We are wrapping up author month this month. This has been such a cool, such an interesting little experiment that I did on my side and just such a fun month sitting down with all these different authors. We go from business books to fiction to nonfiction to fantasy to sci-fi to children's books. I mean, we're all over the place with the people that are coming on this month. And for me, doing a daily show, man, that has been such a big difference than doing a weekly show. But I'm so excited. I'm ready to get started. And I hope that you are as well. My motto in life is make money and have fun. I'm on a mission to show everyone how to make money and have fun. I'm all about making money and having fun. So here's the deal. Today's guest is actually a good friend of mine. I met him a couple years ago. I guess it was almost three years ago at this point, maybe even four years ago at one of the first real estate investing. I guess you could call it a school that uh, we kind of attended together, went to together and learned how to invest in real estate and kind of grew from there. And then one day he lets me know that he actually wrote this book. And I'm like, no way. You got to give me a signed copy. I got it right here. And I got my man backstage, Mr. Ballet. Sampo, get in here, Ballet. What's hey, going on, dude? what's going on? <laughs> Look at you, man. I haven't seen you in forever. What's going on in your life? Well, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, actually, Fred, you can't remember, but before I actually wrote the book, I was telling you, you told me about your book. Yeah. And I, and I said, I want to write a book. And you said, why don't you just do it? And some went off in my head. I'm like, yeah, why don't I just do it? Fred was like, just do it. Everybody keeps saying they want to do it. Just do it. That's what I did. I did it. And what I did is I started researching to figure out how I'm going to do this. I had a book in my head and I'm like, right. I got to figure this out. So I got help publishing. Uh, it's a it's a group called um, Book Publishing. They teach you how to, you know, how to write a book and what's, you know, I get your ideas together and everything like that. Yeah. Get a, basically the self-publishing from start to finish. So I did that and I pub published the book. Um, it's been two years now and um, it's been okay, mm -hmm. but I have, a, um, I have a lot of plans for this book. It's a series. It's going to, uh, you know, really pan. That's, that's awesome, man. So I have your book right here before the flood. It looks like a, uh, a fantasy novel. That you yeah. kind of put together. So tell us about this book. What, what was the inspiration? How'd you get started? Let me give you the floor and just kind of tell us about it. Okay, so um, I was really big into like ancient aliens, ancient astronauts, um, space. Ever since I remember my my first library book was about Mars. So uh, I just used to do a lot of research and then watching ancient aliens and then. I came up with this fantasy world, how the world would mm, could have been before the flood happened, you know, the biblical flood. And I just started putting pieces together from stories I heard, you know, about the Anunnaki. And I started building a story in my head. I was telling, you know, my soon to be ex-wife that I have this book in my head and I would just tell her different things for it and just smile. And when I actually got the process going, it was kind of easy because I had everything that I wanted. I just had to put it together. So it's basically, um, I believe that um, a lot of the stuff in the Bible is misunderstood technology or misunderstood astronauts. Because, you know, we live in a universe, there's billions of planets. Why life is the only, you know, on Earth is the only place. I think it had life other places. And if you have a primitive society, that they don't understand technology like spaceships and all this other stuff. And a group of guys come down and they fly in and they have all this technology. They're going to say, you guys are gods. And being, um, you know, I, I would say like almost like humans, they say, yeah, we're gods. Do what we say. So basically, I, that's hmm. the gist of my story of, um, you know, human beings on Earth dealing with um advanced astronauts just just calling them gods and just treating them like gods and doing whatever they say and the gods would trinkle and give them little things like help them out with farming because they understand farming better you know when to when to 
you know, plant, you know, the solar, the uh, the solstice, the winter solstice, the summer solstice, different things, help them out and say, hey, I'm helping you out, you help me out. So I need gold, I need women, I need this, I need that. And the humans are just constantly doing this. And it's a conflict between two brothers, uh, Shango and Ogun, I base it in Africa. Um, if you know me, you know I'm very Afrocentric. I'm, you know, always black this, black that. So I built my my uh, universe on Pangaea. You know, Pangaea is basically when they believe the Earth was one. So, you know, Africa was the middle. That's where it started, and then the story will progress throughout Pangaea. So, um, it's a really good story. I believe it's a good story. The people that actually read the book and speak to me say it's a good story, and I want to do a series. Actually, I'm working on a screenwrite to make it into either a movie or a series. I want to do a series because I have so much. I'm writing book two. It's been a little bit, little bit difficult. COVID has really hit me hard. Um, lost my mother, job, getting a divorce, and dealing with the kids, and trying to write a book is 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 really. Oof. really really tough so yeah that's that's a man the story is amazing i mean it's it's so cool um always i always like to think back to like the caveman and the neanderthal man and, and kind of base a lot of modern day lessons off of that and so this is kind of an interesting twist on almost that idea of what what was the previous man doing and what if there was an encounter with a more intellectually advanced version of ourselves that went back in that in that period of time. So I like it. I think that's, that's really fun. So tell me, so apparently I didn't know this, but apparently I was a bit of the inspiration behind you writing this book. So what was your, your process for actually going about writing it and that kind of stuff? So, um, it's a lot of people that off that didn't, you know, offhanded, like help me out. So basically, um, Larry, Larry, um, was my mentor. Larry Steinhaus. So Larry's like, Bali, anything you want to do, you seek out people that did it before and you just follow their blueprint. So that's why I got help. Um, I started doing Miracle Mornings, right, for my book. Actually, I got up at five o'clock in the morning. First thing I'd do, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd like take a cold shower. I would um, drink some water get some stress, stress in, like do some push-ups, sit-ups, get warm, you know, and then uh, meditate. Um, meditate. And then after that, I start writing. And Fred, everything was just coming to me. It was just coming. So I just write in and create my mm. stories and come in. And then um, what I would do is I would, I had a job that I was driving a lot. So I bought an app that um, I could do uh, uh, voice to text. So if I have ideas while I'm driving long hours, I would just put it on the car speaker and just start speaking. This is a story. And then it would, you know, it would come up crazy sometimes because, you know, I have an accent and everything like that. But then I'll go back in and try to figure it out. Like, what did I say here? And then sometimes I change up the whole story and just, yeah. you know, just chat the, uh, you know, I just did a lot of writing without editing because the editing process was so long. Like you just mess yourself up. So every day I, I just, I do, I did a chapter, maybe a half a chapter, come back, finish it the next day, get it in. And I, and I actually did this book in 90 days, did the book in 90 days. Wow. I got it. That's amazing. I got it written. Um, I got it edited artwork. I went on um, the artwork. You won't even believe how much I paid for that artwork. I paid 60 bucks for somebody to do that cover. Nice. <laughs> it's a lady in, it, it's a lady in, um, she's in the Eastern Europe. So I guess that the, the dollar exchange, cause I had right. a different, I had a different version and it was humans and I put it out on Facebook and they're like, no, I won't do this one because it looks too er um, erotic. It looks like it's a, it's like a, you know, one of those sleazy, because the guy had his shirt off, right? You know, stuff like that. So a little too provocative, <laughs> right? And then I, you know, I got this one. This one, 
I, I just type what I want. And she just came up with this. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's it. That's exactly hmm. it. She did the design. I didn't do any. any. I just told her what I wanted. Boop, up, on, on, upward, boom, got it. Um, when hmm. I did that, I actually got a, um, I did a, I have, this book has, is a digital hard copy and an audio book. So I went on same Upwork and listened to a lot of different um, voice actors. And I got this guy, um, has a heavy voice, almost like Morgan Freeman. And I reached out to him and I said, you know, I, I want you to do my book. He said, how long is it? I told him the number of pages. I sent him the script. He said, I'll do it. And this guy did an amazing job. He might have had one or two little mistakes in there with the, the vocabulary, but he did an amazing job. Like I sat there and, I'm, and I couldn't even believe I wrote this book. I'm sitting there like, wow. <laughs> you could actually, the audiobook, you could actually feel like he's doing the visuals for you. And what I wanted to do late, what I want to do later on is do a male and a female. So I have two different people reading the book. So you'll get the male voices done by a male and the female voices done by a female. And that would have like your book is going to be like a real, like, like a real story, you know, you, you know, but yeah, um, the process was fun. Um, my editor, he, I got, had a real good editor. He, he, you know, he changed up a lot of stuff and um, gave me a lot of suggestions. We fight back and forth. Um, actually, did you find? Did you find your editor on fi on a uh, Upwork too? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, he was amazing. Um, in the book, I have um, I used a lot of my uh, my daughter's name. My the, actually the, the the main character is my daughter's name, Nefertari. And I use other, I have four daughters, so I have to do book two because I didn't put two of them in the first book. So uh, <laughs> I'm on the line. They're like, daddy, when are you going to finish this? I need to be in it. But, um, and I actually, I actually got feedback from them on a different characters because it's, it's amazing how you develop a character. Like I got this guy in here and I was going to just put him in as a filler and say, you know what, he's going to die. And eventually he became like, uh, everybody loved him. My daughter's like, no, you can't kill him. No, 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 you can't. And we was going back and forth fighting over this. And it's like, nope, can't do that. And um, people that actually read the book say, I love this character. He's a really stand-up person. And, 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 and he's ended up being the like star of the book. So, yeah, the process was amazing. Uh, I wish I just had the time to just sit and just write books and have to do nothing else. I'll just, right. I'll, I'll punch it out. Because oh. I have yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way, man. I mean, it's, it's funny now trying to balance everything. It's like, I got the mastermind going on. I got this show to do. I got other books that I want to write. I got a book that's coming out. So, you know, you just, you got to balance it all and then, and then roll with the punches. Like you said, you know, COVID came by and gave yeah. us a, you know, gave us a challenge, something to, to overcome. And I'll tell you that book, America Morning, you get that book and you follow it. It, yeah, it, it's amazing. Your results, like, I, I was like, I'm getting a download. Some people might under, not understand that, but I'm just getting all the information to me. And it's just, it's funny because I've had the book for a while, but I never actually read it. And, and it's like, I always I always get inspired to read it. And then like, the, it's the same thing that, that we just talked about. Like, I, I forget about reading because I'm reading something else or, you know, I, I got the problem is that I, I can buy books faster than I can read them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, And so you end up getting like 52 books that you haven't read yet. And you're like, don't worry, I'm going to read them all. And then you end up buying more and, and never read any of the ones that are yeah. on your shelf. Same, same thing with my book. A lot of a lot of my friends bought it. And they're like, Bali, I, I've got to tell you, I didn't read it. I got it because I want to support you. And I'm like, well, I really want people that's reading it to give me feedback. Um, Carolyn. She gave me a lot of feedback. She bought like six books and she like she reads a lot of books. So she bought six for Christmas and was giving it out as gifts. And she's like, Bali, your editor made some mistakes in there. And I'm like, don't say it too well, because when people see that and they put that out in the reviews, you, you know, it's Amazon, right. you flag your book. But, um, yes, you know, for my first book, I wanted it to be a little bit longer, but after a while I was getting, I was getting antsy and I just like, 
you know, went straight to sure. the point and get yeah. in. Um, you know. I mean, my, my first book is very small, but everybody that's read it said how intense it is. I mean, and that was the idea behind it is that it's not meant to be one of those big books that tells a lot of stories, has a lot of fluff and all that kind of stuff. Right. It's meant to get you right to the point. Right, right. And like, right. here's here's what you need. Here's how you execute it. And when you do that, you're going to have these results, basically. Right. And so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that done is better than perfect. And plus, you can always do updated and expanded editions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. When, when you when you when you uh, introduce yourself and you get uh, give me the book. And I'm looking at him like this young boy. If he could do it, I could do it, you know. Mm-hmm. And then then I realized anybody could write a book. Anybody could write a book. People, a lot of people have ideas for book out there, but they're just scared. You could write the book. You just just get a good editor and you know get help. Um, I had um, two, uh, Melissa and um, Kristen. They they got my story and they were giving me feedback. You know, Melissa would tell you, "Hey, this thing was crazy when you first sent it. You know, it was like a movie script. It wasn't a book." Right. And just get in pointers and just keep sending it to them. They got tired of me. They're like, Bali, these things are long. I am working. <laughs> you know? But I just mm-hmm. I just found people that, that was willing to, to to invest the time in reading like a chapter. And um, you know, my yeah. aunt, she helped me out too. My daughters helped me out in different chapters. They're like, Yeah, that's good, that's not good, you know, do this, do that. And it's it's the process was it's like really like having a child you know like you waiting all this months for the child to come you feed you know you feed in the mother and everything like that and then when it comes i get the book cover i was so excited when i got that book cover right then when i send it to amazon and they send me my sample copies i'm like oh look at that that's my baby right there amazon was amazing too um, yeah you know on amazon i had a lot of um like when I when I published the book, I was gonna do a, a book signing, and it was like the book signing is Friday. I launched the book like like Tuesday, and they were supposed to get me copies so I could be at the book signing with books. But with Amazon, there's a button that says you could release the book, and then what I try to do is release it and then unrelease it because I wanted it to be released on the day I had to do the signing. They stopped the shipment because of that because it didn't. It wasn't all long enough. So I called and I'm like, listen, I have a book signing Friday and this is it. And they're like, well, it's going to take so long, whatever. And then the lady was like, let me talk to somebody. And it's like, we're going to rush this shipment. They actually paid for the shipment to be rushed to me. And it was amazing that they did that in two days. I got my books in two days and I was able to go to my book signing without any problems. I would, I, any issues I had with the audiobook or anything like that, Amazon staff was always there. I, I really like um, self publishing on Amazon. I, I agree. I, my first two books I published on Amazon. And I remember my, my first book when I published it, I, um, I had trouble with the ebook. So, so I did all like the, the formatting myself to, to format this book. But then when you, when you convert it to ebook, some of the things get tweaked and I have um, I have infographics in my book, in my first book. And so they were like all like broken and on, on different pages. And I tried it like four or five times. Then finally, I just called Amazon up and they're like, oh, we can do that for you if you want. I'm yeah. like, OK, just do it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it cost me a few bucks, but I'm like, you know, whatever, get it done. The, the course I took, it showed you how, how to do it. I can't remember the whole details now, but the course showed you what to download what to put your book in and i had those those wasn't issues the only issue i had is um was the shipping i guess yeah the shipping and i I think i had to edit something they sent it back to 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 do some edit some editing or something like some information was off and they sent it back and then you know that was it but yeah it's pretty easy it is amazing how easy it is um it's, it's just now selling the book and you know the marketing side of it promoting the book and stuff like that so yeah. like I, I have a lot of free copies out there i think um me too <laughs> when, I, when i checked it probably like 500 copies out there and um i probably got over 150 book sales and audiobook 
I think it's like 20 audiobooks. Um, but um, I think that doing a book two will um, will get more readers. So the people that re mm -hmm. read book one is going to turn around and get book two and, you know, book three and four. And, you know, by the time I'm to four, I might have a huge audience because Exactly. Um, you know, you got loyal readers out there, but they, I have enough information. I have enough um, storylines to do at least six books in this series. That's awesome. It's actually funny that you mentioned that when I when I brought up writing my book, it was kind of it almost became competitive to you in a sense to, to write your own book. And that was the same way that I ended up writing my first book. So I don't know if I ever told you this story, but I went to a jujitsu seminar and it was a phenomenal seminar. But at the end, the instructor got up and he goes, hey, I wrote these two books. And these are them, by the way. He's mm -hmm. like, if any if anybody wants them, come grab me. And my jaw just dropped to the floor. I'm like, what? You mean that people can write books like anybody? And mm -hmm. I was like, no, no, no. You, you ain't going to be the only person who writes a book here. <laughs> and that was when I figured out it was actually before uh, KDP was a company called Create Space. Yeah. You know, the same thing. But but Amazon acquired it and turned it into KDP mm -hmm. at that point. But it was like it was so funny because I went through all that stuff. This was five years ago now where I when I wrote this first book, I went through all of those steps of figuring out how to format the book, how to write it, how to get the, the message across. Like just there was so much learning involved with getting that book out that it was it was amazing kind of to, to learn all that and then grow from there now into into my third book coming out this spring. Right. And you see, um, a lot of times you hear people say, I want to do this. I want to do that. And then when you said it, just, just do it. It was like a slap in the face. Like, what do you mean? Just do it. Just, yeah, just do it. Write the book. What, what are you waiting on? And that's it. Sometimes that's what you need. You know, you have people, I want to invest. I want to do this. I want to do that. And they just sit there at the sidelines, sit there on the sidelines. They don't jump in. Then they see somebody else that jump in and they're like, whoa, this guy, he just came. No, because he took the chance. You 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 dove in. I took the chance. I I paid for education. I I paid to publish. I paid everything. I mean, I didn't make the money back, but eventually I will because right. I have plans for this book, and I I, I plan for a series, a movie, or something. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna do it. The movie would be so cool. Oh man, it would. <laughs> that, be, that would be awesome. If, would, let let me ask you this: If they made a movie, would you want to be in it? For for like a like an extra I, or a cameo, I might do a, yeah, I might do a, a cameo like um um like uh what's this guy from um Marvel that died um oh Stan Lee Stan Lee you know he, he I might do that you know yeah be kind of cool yeah that'd be fun I like but, it yeah. so, even if it's like it's like Netflix I I see some of these movies on Netflix and I'm like listen my my storyline is way better than this <laughs> right <laughs> I feel <laughs> the same way about Netflix I'm like how yeah, how like, these guys get these things up? I could get you know mine. The other funny part is I'm actually, a lot of my friends now are in the movie making space. Okay. And I'm like, you know, I think it's getting really easier and easier to make a movie. Easier, no, no offense to anybody who's who's made a movie and, and knows how hard it actually is. But in my mind, I'm like, how hard can it actually be to get a movie out there? Because I, I have so many friends that are making a movie right now. Right. It's, it's like, it, it's, 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 so it's cool. amazing. Like, it, the, the technology now, like, get a couple of cameras and you film scenes and costumes, you know, my daughter does makeup. You could so you could find people all over the place doing this stuff, for, you know, yeah. pay them, you know, yeah, they'll be part of the project. But yeah. the, um, um, the heck was I going to say? <laughs> it literally just left me. Oh, uh, some, one of the, one of the famous, famous directors I heard recently, I forget what movie it was, some horror movie a couple of years ago, but I think they said that they filmed the whole movie on an iPhone with a, with like a gimbal. You know, which is like, you know, today, like th this camera in your phone is is almost as good as, you know, a professional quality camera in, in some way. So there's there's so much the the barrier to entry continuously is getting smaller and smaller. Getting smaller yeah. And then and, and, and basically um, what what the, the, the course uh, writers were saying is like a lot of people think in movies when they think movies oh i got to get a a, a a a big Warner Brother project or um, paramount you just like this a lot of different small studios um are willing to work with you and it's just the right situation and then you figure you know um 
the movie industry or the film industry has been stagnant because of COVID. Um, come this summer, it's a good you know, point. They're gonna be looking for content, so I, you know, you know, I would, I, I'm gonna put my best foot forward and see what what happens, man. Like, like, yeah, that'd be cool. I'd love to hear the the progress on that. Yeah. So, real quick, let's let's talk to the people out there that are watching us, that are listening about. I want to talk to the the aspiring author, the person who's in that space that wants to write a book but doesn't know how to get started. What kind of advice would you give to that person? Um, what I would give to that person is know what type of book you want to write, right? So this a lot of people is like, my life has been crazy. I think my, my life would make a good book. But if you're not a popular person, no one wants to read your memoir. I'm sorry. Nobody wants to read your memoir unless you're popular. So maybe you say, you know what? I'll make a fiction book, fictional characters, and use my stories. Um, if you want to, if you really want to write a book, just do your research. You go on, go on, you go go on YouTube and get a little research of what to do, and just start writing down on paper. You write every day, write every day, write every day, and um, eventually. You get the help. You have to get help. You know, you don't want to just write a book on your own without getting help because you're gonna have a lot of mistakes. You're gonna, you know, a lot of learning. So basically, if you could find a company that 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 helps you and or you know give you training modules how to write a book and stuff like that, get it because when I did my course, like how you went through all the formatting and all that stuff, I had that in there, so I didn't have that problem. I, you know, I, I, they told me, listen, go to, to these different um, Upworks and get an editor. You know, some people figure, oh, I just edited myself or I get one of the programs. No, you get a real professional editor and they will tell you, listen, this is crap. Your writing is crap, but mm -hmm. work on your craft, work on this, work on that. I'll help you out. And sometimes you need that. You need that slap in the face. Like, you know, it, it's not that good how you think it is. And you just just having that mindset, everything you do, business, writing, work at home, you have to have that mindset. You have to have that mindset. This is what I'm going to do and no one is going to stop me and just keep going. And when you get punched in the face, you get up and you keep going, you know, and um, I would look into Miracle Mornings because it really helped me. It, I had a time and a space that in the morning times was so quiet. All the kids were sleeping. No one to bother me. You're fresh. I try writing at night. I used to fall, fall asleep. You know, so just figure out a way that works for you and just keep writing. There's no time frame on your book. Just keep writing. You have your manuscripts and and then, yeah, you know, when you're ready to do it, pull the trigger and get an editor and, 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 and pay that money if that's what you want to do. I love that. It's a, it's, it's a it's almost like a step by step kind of process that you put in there, but really it just comes down to doing your research, writing every day, getting help, and uh, just keep on writing like like we yeah. had in here. Yeah, every I love day. that every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's it's funny because I feel like I, I asked that question all month to to all of the different authors on here, and I feel like for the most part, the only thing that stops people is their own mind. Your own mind. Yep. You know, you're just, you're in your own way and, and you got to move out of your own way. <laughs> or, the, or, or the dream stealers. You know, like, wow, you're going to write a book? But, 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 you know, what's wrong with you? You can't write a book. Like, I see your handwriting. Oh, I see your, your posts on Facebook. Like, you misspell words. You Your vocabulary is messed up. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. You just keep writing. And the more you write, the better you get. And then there's programs. You know, there are different programs that would help you. You know, there's writing programs, there's there's, there's correction programs. You just you just get the help. I don't care how, you know, I use the 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 speak to text. It doesn't matter. You still write it. You know, just keep going. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's it, whatever it takes. I, I I talked to one of the the authors this month, and she said there's there's writer's block, but there's no such thing as speaker's block that she's heard of so far. 
So yeah. speaking the text or, or, you know, just speaking your, your book and, and recording yourself speak and then converting it later makes a ton of sense doing that. Yeah. Half my book was speak. I just yeah. started speaking and it's, you know, just speaking. And then you got to learn how you got to learn how to, the, the, you know, the, the different programs works, you know, sometimes you got to slow it down. You got to put the punctuation because you're going to get a whole. <laughs> right. You end up having with like a run on sentence. You're like, yeah. why is my sentence 180 words here? <laughs> yeah. 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 And then um, capitalization, misspell words, words that they put in there. They think what you say, it was difficult for me with my accent. So, right. Um, but I just, I just powered through it and it was a great process. I used to be just, I used to be sitting there typing and smiling. Like, why are you smiling? Because this character is doing some dumb stuff, man. <laughs> it's great stuff. Like really, it was That's really funny. fun. I wish I could just do that every day, man. Amazing. I, I, really fun. Yeah. Amazing. So cool. So Bally, how can people get in touch with you? How can they pick up a copy of your book and how can they follow up with you? Um, um I use Facebook a lot. Bali was sample, Facebook, um, Instagram. And my book is on Amazon. So if you go on Amazon and you type in Before the Flood by Bali was sample, it would come up. You would see the cover, the green cover. There's a there's actually I, there's a lot of books named Before the Flood. But if you put my name in into um the Amazon, um, it will come up and I have it's a this digital format, hard copy, and the audiobook. Uh, the audio book, oh my God, it's amazing. I'm done, I'm not just saying that because I wrote the book. I'm just saying it's amazing. The guy did a phenomenal job. So some people who don't want to read, they put it in, and it's a three hour, it's a three hour audio book, and it's amazing. I would bet money on that. That if you get it, you'll be like, yeah, it's he did a good job. Is it on Audible? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'll have to check that out because yeah. I'm I'm even even I'm excited to listen to the audio now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did a listen, he did a good job. I listened to it like three times already when I got it, and like wow, like this guy is really good. That's um, fun. And then he, it 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 costs like six hundred and forty five dollars for him to do it. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it it, it you know different thing. The or the 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 editor costs a little bit more than everything else, but you could find everything on Upwork. Yeah, and you don't have to pay these companies phenomenal money to 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 because there's people out there that would rob you. So if you if you're doing if you're gonna do it, like really um, do your research. I'm um, with it. Yeah, I, I, I use, totally agree. I use uh, I, I'm not getting paid for this self publishing school. They're really good. Their program is really good. Um, they they have um, online training. They have a Facebook group. Actually, when I release my book. I, you know, they, they would do a countdown and have people come on and download it because you do the free version and everything like that. So they're pretty good. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different things out there you could do. Uh, if you really want to write your book, you would find a way and you would not find an excuse. I love it. I love it. So on that note, is there anything that you want to leave our audience with words of wisdom, encouragement, or just something that you want to say? So... Don't let this COVID in 2020 get you down, right? Where I came from, I came from nothing, right? Trinidad, nothing. I was poor, and but I was happy. I never felt poor. And I just kept trying to improve and trying to improve. Don't let anybody tell you can't do it. From my background, people would say, they would look at me and say, he could never do that, write a book, invest in real estate, do all this stuff. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. There's always a way. And what Larry would say is find a person, the best person that's doing that, and do exactly what they do. Blue, you know, follow the blueprint. You know, don't give up. You know, this 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 COVID event is just an event in life, is teaching us lessons. You know, focus on your family and focus on what you want to do because you never know. You know, you don't want to live in regret. You want to do what everything that I want to do, I'm doing it. Want to travel, do it. I always want to write a book. I've been talking about writing a book for years, and I'm doing it. I'm going to write more. So don't give up. Love it. Love it, man. Bally, this has been so cool. I'm so excited to have you on here, man. This is awesome. Thanks for being here. <laughs> no problem, man. I was excited when you invited me. Well, I was kind of disappointed because I was like, 
Fred put this out here and I put I put my name in. I was like, yeah, he's gonna call you and tell me. Then I'm seeing all these other people. I'm like, damn. And then he reached out and it's like, yeah, I'll do it. I was I, I wasn't gonna miss this for the world, Fred. I'm yeah. really, I'm really proud of you. You do what you say you're gonna do. You 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 motivate young man and you're doing really good things. Um I'm pretty sure I'm gonna see you up there one day and I'll be like, I knew this guy when he didn't know nothing. <laughs> thanks so much man yeah. we're just i mean we're just out here living our sole purpose that, that's yeah. all it really is we're, we're fully aligned doing what we love and yeah. of course just like everybody else we're making money and having fun brother yeah yeah bally yeah. so good to see you again man everybody else we'll see you again next time so um what's up yeah. um this is just on Facebook. Do I have a link that I can share with people? Or? Yeah. So, so this show actually goes everywhere. So basically right now we're, we're live on Facebook, uh, my Facebook page, my Facebook channel, my Facebook business page and uh, YouTube as well. Then after this, we're going on all the different podcasts. So you're going to be up on Apple podcasts, Spotify, Google pot, you name it, you name it anywhere. Even there's even a podcast that we go on called geo Savan, which is the number one podcast in all of Southeast Asia. <laughs> wow. It's, it's really interesting. I don't know how I got on there. We're on uh, <laughs> Audible, Amazon Music, and then I'm even putting you on TV. So we're going on to Roku and Amazon Fire TV as well. So wherever you're tuning in from, whether you're watching us live or streaming afterwards, listening to us, just leave us a review, like us, send us some comments, subscribe. Whatever you can do to show support would mean the world to me, to us. And yeah, after this, to answer your question, Bally, I'll send you the link and you can blast this out wherever you want to go with it. All right. Thanks, man. I'm really, you got it. I'm really proud. Awesome. I'm proud of you. Thanks for being here, brother. All right. All right. Thanks. All right. Yep. See you guys.